Hello again. It is always good to be with you. I did one about uh, God and what he looks like, what I saw when I died, uh, how I witnessed him, and I've been asked to be an eyewitness of Christ in the Godhead. And this is kind of, you know, your part two, and there's going to be several parts in this. And I can't do it all at once. The subject is just too big. And even through all of these, it's not going to be covered completely, so you'll have to do some study on your own, get into the scriptures and read, and actually really think about what you're reading and how God wants things to be clear and not confusing. I know in the creeds that people have adopted, like the Nicene Creed or the Athanasian Creed, it's talking about an incomprehensible God when Christ himself said that to know him is life eternal. To know them, not to be all confused about it. I talk to people everywhere I go. Since I'm supposed to be a witness, I need to do that. And I'll ask them questions, and I get all kinds of things, and they will start to talk about this uh, God that's been described in the Nicene Creed. Uh, there's three different creeds. all came out of the Catholic Encyclopedia. It's the, what they've actually adopted and believe. And it is what all the Protestants have adopted also. They say they want to have their own beliefs, yet they run on what the Catholics have to say. And that happens a lot. I've been thinking about this, and perhaps, perhaps what we ought to do is discuss a little bit about authority and how fast it could take you to know God if you had revelation. Of course, in Genesis, uh, we all know, it says God made man in his own image. And in Genesis 32:30, it talks about that Jacob saw God face to face, and Moses did, where he says, I talked to God face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Well, now, if you had an occasion to have that happen, it would ha take you, to, you know, about two seconds to figure out what God looks like, not 65 years, having a big council over it. Paul meets him on the road to Damascus. You know, this is after he had died and resurrected. And How long did it take Paul to figure out what he looked like? Yeah, you know, about two seconds. He looks like a man. Now, is he going to look like a man just to say, here I am, and then turn into something else? Well, that doesn't make much sense because that's deception, and God doesn't do that. And uh, am I three in one beings? Mm, what's the purpose of that? If you're this powerful God, to be three in one. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. Why not just be me? Hi, I'm God. Take it or leave it. Why split into three? I mean, what is the point of that? What is the point of being resurrected and showing his apostles, hi, it's me, and then go away and turn into a smoke cloud? That's just not going to happen. So what we kind of have to look at is where all this comes from. It's a, the authority. Now, obviously, the apostles and prophets of the scriptures had authority. They were called of God. And they spoke for God. Now, you think about the people who wrote these creeds. Where did they get their authority to do that? Now, as you look at this authority thing, you have the Catholics who say we are a continuous run from Christ. Po apostolic genealogy uh, back to Peter and to Christ. Then we have the Protestants who are a break-off of the Catholics, 
So in other words, they're apostates from what would be the true church if it's the full genealogy back to Christ. So anybody that says they're Protestant, man, this is, I know it might get a lot of you mad at me, but this is just facts of, of how the definitions of things go. If you break off of the true church, you're an apostate group, and you don't have the authority. And then if you don't believe in Revelation, you don't believe in prophets anymore, you think it all ends with the Bible. Here, my Bible. I've got it right here. It all ends with the Bible and the apostles after they died. Now there's no more, but yet we still have a church of authority, and you don't have revelation. How do you know that you've been called of God to start a church? You can't be called of God to start a church without revelation. So you can't believe in uh, being called of God or even having your prayers answered if you don't believe in revelation, if you don't believe in continuous revelation. And then he says to Amos that surely God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And the prophets spoke in olden days by the, by the Holy Ghost. So there's only one other way that you can have the true church. If there was a falling away and a, an ending to it, you need revelation again, and so that's called restore. Then it has to be restored. So you only have two choices, really. Continuous genealogy to Christ or a restoration by Christ of his true church. That's all you got. Because if the Catholic Church is the true church, you break off of it, you're an apostate. If the Catholic Church is a false church, then everybody that breaks off of it are all false. They're not called of God, they don't believe in Revelation, so how can you have an angel or God or Christ come to you and say, hey, this is my, my true church? And so you have to have a restoration that's all that's left. And so what are you going to do about that? Who claims restoration? There's only one church I know of that claims restoration. That's called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So you have the Catholic, which is Universal Church, or you have the Restored Church, of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And that's all you got. That's the only place the priesthood would be. And now you have people coming up with this Nicene Creed who don't believe in Revelation. They don't believe in having God talk to you. They say so themselves they don't believe in Revelation. But yet at the same time, in contradiction, say they have answers to prayers? Can't have both. You only have one. And so uh, when, you, when these things happen, they choose how to write down what God is. It's all by their own thinking. God's not helping them. By their own admission, God's not helping them. These are the facts of the history. I didn't make this stuff up. I'm just telling you what history says and what they themselves tell me. You know, I talk to all kinds of religions. If you figure out how many gods people worship around the world, have any clue how many there really are? Millions. Millions. Literally, in the beliefs of the religions around the world. So who's right? How do you know? How do you know that this God is real? How do you know that this book is true? Oh, just because your dad said so? How do you know it? How do you know that the guy in here named Jesus is the Christ? You can't make it up yourself. 
It's not for private interpretation. So you got to have Christ tell you, and Paul says that's the way it is. You, to know about Christ, you got to have the Holy Ghost reveal it through modern day revelation to you personally that he is the Christ, he is the Lord, or you cannot know it. You can know about him. You can read all you want about his miracles. You can say, hi, I accept you as my Lord. But it's all a guess unless you've had revelation given to you. And what about priesthood? you got to have priesthood. It tells you you can't do it yourself. you got to be called as Aaron was. And, and that's through a prophet who has authority from God can't do it by reading about it. You can't do it by thinking, hey, this is my calling. And if you ever say, I've been called by God to be blah, 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 then you've just admitted to modern day revelation, which most people deny. I hear so many different questions about who God is. And all you need to do is have the Holy Ghost reveal it to you which is revelation and God is telling you. Or you see him and have the Holy Ghost tell you that's who it is. Well, that's what I got to have. I got to see him. I got to be with him. I got to talk to him. Like I said in the other video, I've seen the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost all together Three separate individuals, not one big blob. They're separate people, separate personalities. They're not the same in their personalities, but they are extremely the same when it comes to teaching truth, comes to following the eternal laws, and loving us and wanting us to be where they are. I mean, they are tight with that. But it's three individuals doing it. Why? What makes them one is that they follow the same laws. Christ says, I follow what my dad tells me. I follow what I saw my dad do. So if he's a three in one, what's he saying? I'm following what I tell me, and I'm following what I saw me do. And then I... Testify to me that I'm real, the Holy Ghost. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. How, how, why would he say I'm doing what my father says and I'm doing what my dad told me if that's him he's talking about? You know, it's all unnecessary if he's this three in one, it doesn't make any sense. Wait, hi, I'm God, this is the way it is, accept me. But there are three, and there's reasons for that. You've got to reason this out and, and understand that priesthood matters. Because even Christ, it says he didn't take the honor unto himself. He was ordained a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And he was ordained by his father. That's God the Father, not Joseph. So he was ordained by his father to be the Savior and Redeemer. And he was ordained to the priesthood. But even Christ had to be ordained by his dad. He didn't just say, hi, here I am, I got all the priesthood. His dad gave it to him, and it says so in the Bible. And it says that he became perfect by the things which he suffered. Believe the Bible, all of the Bible, not just little pieces, and think about what you're reading. And why would God be deceptive of who he is? Why would he show himself to the apostles and then change? It's just mind-boggling to me. But he didn't change, and that's the truth. I've had people say, well, that's your truth. 
This is my truth. Two and two is four. That's true. Well, my truth is two and two and five is five. Now, don't worry. Just know that God's real, heavens. And he lives separate from his son. They are three different people. And they're real. And the only way you know that is Revelation. And I can testify that Revelation is still going on. We still have answers to prayers to Revelation. And we still have prophets on the earth today, as same as Moses and the rest of them, who are leading the people on earth in the ways of God. Christ is at the head of the church. Prophet is merely a mouthpiece for Christ. I know these things are real. These things are true. And it, it hurts me sometimes when I talk to people who don't know. I am not tearing down anybody's faith because I find people with great faith everywhere, no matter what their claim churches and many people who don't even claim to be in a church have great faith. But understand that faith is only perfect when you know who God is, because you can't have faith in an imperfect, unknowable God when you don't know who he is. Uh, you got to know who he is. And I am grateful to have the experience that I have had in, in seeing them and being called to be an eyewitness, even though it's an overwhelming calling. But I bear this witness to you in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Now, you understand that this subject is huge, so I have to have it all broken up. It's going to come in a lot of segments. And so I'll make, I'll make one on, like, the priesthood, how it was in the past and how it was restored, uh, a little bit more on how scientists look at God and how atheists look at God and and how some of the other religions even look at God and then uh, probably a little more depth in how Christians look at God from all the conversations I've had because even the Christians don't have it all the, the same. So look forward to having several more videos. This is a huge subject. I could talk a year on it, uh, but uh, we'll see what we can do about making it concise and a little bit in several different videos. So look forward to these videos coming.